we all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We are all united. Can I? Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for coming. This will be a smaller size, kind of intimate uh, meeting between um, all the head of the IGS Secretariat, the chair of the IGS Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group, and all of you. I think we'll have opportunity as well to introduce ourselves, just because we're such a small group. Probably too early for uh, colleagues to join and too cold to walk the streets uh, early in the morning. So my name is Anya Gengo, and I work at the IGF Secretariat as an Associate Program Officer. And uh, maybe I'll start from my right side just to introduce Ms. Henriette Esterhusen. She is the Chair of the Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group. We will be shortly speaking about what the MAG is. In short, the MAG is a quite a large group, not easy to, to steer, but I think Henriette is doing an incredible job that is advising the Secretary General of the United Nations on the program of the uh, IGF. And then on my left side, you have the head of the IGF Secretariat uh, that is based at the United Nations office in Geneva, Mr. Cengata Masango. So today we'll just go very quickly with Cengata and Henriette through what the IGF is really about, uh, what's its structure, working modalities, and just maybe through a friendly Q&A to see how can you benefit the most from the IGF, which is not easy to navigate because it has quite a complex agenda, a lot of sessions, a lot of people to meet. Uh, with that, maybe I'll ask colleagues to uh, project the slides and hand over to Cengetai to start with the beginnings of the IGF. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, great, thank you. Well, thank you very much, and Anya, and thank you very much for joining us, those of you who are here and those of you who are also online. Um, I'll be very quick because um, at the IGF, we actually believe in discussion and we try and discourage PowerPoint slides as much as possible. So I'll just give a brief overview. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, there's myself, there's Anya and also Henriette, the chair, who will be able to answer for you. Any questions? So, um, yes. So just very, very briefly, the IGF is one of the outcomes of the World Summit on the Information Society, WISIS. So WISIS was in two phases. Phase one was in, uh, let me just, oh, no, I'll keep it on. <laughs> Uh, phase one was um, held in Geneva, and um, when they were discussing the World Summit on the Information Society, they were discussing issues of the digital divide, issues of the internet. The internet was growing in popularity, and um, a lot of the economic and social activity was moving on to the internet, and it became one of the critical infrastructures, this is around 2000 when they had the idea of, uh, of starting the WISIS and it came out of, I think an ITU penipotary um, session. The president of Tunis, I think is the one who suggested such a meeting. So the secretary general took it up and the WISIS was announced. And yet, um, was uh, one of the key civil society players uh, of, WISIS and was organizing um, civil society um, there um, with all the other partners in the Association of Progressive Communications. And uh, please feel free to ask her any questions, etc., about um, the activities and the negotiations and struggles they had. Um, so the phase one was held in Geneva, and there was a lot of uh, preparatory phases there, but the main meeting was in Geneva in 2003. And while they were discussing that, they discovered that they didn't have a good definition of what internet governance was 
Is it just the tubes and pipes and the numbering, or is it all the other pieces that go uh, with it, privacy issue, et cetera? So as the um, UN usually does, it formed a working group, and the working group on internet governance, which was established, and it um, operated in 2004, and it brought about a multi-stakeholder body uh, that came to discuss what internet governance was. And they came up with a definition of internet governance, which was a very broad definition of internet governance, which not only included um, the, the physical, the names and numbers, but also the social aspects of the internet. Um, security issues, privacy issues, people with disability issues, et cetera. And then in uh, 2005, uh, there was the phase two of the WISA summit. And then um, 97 heads of state uh, decided to, to give the United Nations Secretary General a mandate to convene a forum to discuss public policy issues uh, pertaining to the internet. And so our mandate is in paragraph 72 of the Tunis Agenda, and you can find it on our website, or you can just Google uh, the Tunis Agenda and you'll be able to read um, what, our, uh, what, what our mandate is. I won't go into it because we don't have that much time. And then um, after that, the Secretary General decided to um, form a secretariat, which will be based in Geneva to help him organize and facilitate um, mm -hmm. the organization of this forum. And um, at that time as well, Greece offered to host the first annual meeting of the IGF, which was held in 30th of October to the 2nd of November in Athens, Greece. So um, structurally speaking, the IGF falls under DESA, that's the Department of Economic and Social Affairs. And DESA is based in New York and we are based in Geneva, um, in Palais. And then the Secretary General also decided to form a multi-stakeholder advisory group, uh, which is the MAG, and which Henriette is currently the uh, chair of the MAG. So these are 40 people which, who are derived from the private sector, civil society, governments, and um, also IGOs can attend. Uh, we have the sec secretariat, which I am the head of, and um, I'm sure you all know Anya, and she deals with the uh, a part, I mean, just uh, she, she does not just deal with the national and regional initiatives, but she deals with a lot of other things as well. And for the IGF, it is a open, bottom up, inclusive, transparent, and non commercial uh, multi stakeholder effort. So we really, really want to emphasize multi stakeholder. We really want to emphasize um, that it is bottom up. So we are not telling people what to do, but the issues that we want to discuss, the discussions that we want to discuss are actually derived from the stakeholders. And the stakeholders are anybody with any interest on the internet, in the internet. You don't even have to be on the internet, but you have to have an interest in getting on the internet because of course there's access issues, et cetera, which we also um, uh, uh, discuss and try and improve. I mean, there's a very common story that we uh, do talk about is that um, one of the outputs of the IGF, if you can say, or one of the good results of the IGF of having people meeting as equals um, in an area is that, um, for instance, in East Africa, there were, it led to the establishment of an IXP so that all the local traffic was kept local instead of um, back in the day, when you wanted to send a message, it would go either to the UK or to Europe or even to the US and then come back to the next door. So it led to the establishment of an IXP because at the IGF, you could meet with, you know, people like the packet clearing house, you could meet with um, 
people in government, you could meet with people in the technical community, discuss issues, discuss problems and come up with um, solutions. And we also believe that if you're building, if you want to build strong public policy instruments, you have to have the view of all stakeholders, not just people sitting in their silos deciding what the community or um, other stakeholder groups should do, but um, have input from all the other stakeholders. Now, um, for the IGF, we do we have held meetings. Uh, this is the 16th IGF. So what we do or what the intent is, is to have meetings in um, different regions of the world. So we did start off in Athens, as I said, and then we went to Rio de Janeiro, Hyderabad, and then Shem El Sheikh. So those, if you see on the um, PowerPoint slide, those are the places that we've been. And next year, the next host country is Ethiopia. And then um, Japan is coming up next. And in 2024, we don't have a confirmed host yet, um, but in 2025, we have um, a proposal from Russia as well. So those are the three proposed venues for next year. I'd also like to mention that the IGF is not just a meeting. We do have a lot of intersessional activities, which um, Anya is going to go through. And um, I think that is all I sh should say before I hand it over to Anya. And of course, Henrietta is going to come in. I don't know if you want to come in now or you want to come in later just to comment. And um, I just want to welcome our mm. participants, our virtual participants. Um, I see uh, we have several people here from different continents, different parts of the world. Um, uh, I see um, Kito here from Cape Town, my, my, my colleague from Research ICT Africa. Just welcome everyone. This newcomer session is supposed to be friendly, informal. Um, you can ask any question. Um, and you have the core of the IGF Secretariat team here. And so just look forward to lots of interchange with you all. Well, thank you very much to both uh, uh, Chengatai and Anriet. So to continue, yes, where Chengatai uh, stopped, I think he well said that we should firstly set the records clear that the IGF is really far more than just one annual big conference or annual event. So throughout the year, there are a number of activities happening and organizing and hosting uh, an annual IGF such as this one in Katowice is just one part of our, one segment of our work. A good portion of our work relates to what we call the IGF's intersessional work. It's basically the work that's happening in between the two annual meetings. It's substantive, which means thematically oriented and very much dependent on the community which means that we basically, in a bottom-up open consultative process, uh, ask stakeholders around the world to understand about the topics that are their priority, to understand what could be the focus of the intersessional work. And then based on those inputs, the MAG, through its deliberations, a number of meetings decides what could be the, um, the subject thematic focus of the intersessional work. Intersectional work takes different forms. Uh, so far we had, and we have actually, uh, the so-called best practice forums, which are basically um, community-centered thematic work focusing on, as I said, a priority issue, but trying to, in a bottom-up consultative way, look at the existing good practices around the world, around disciplines and uh, stakeholder groups on particular issues. So to illustrate even more closer, this year, for example, the MAG agreed that there will be two best practice forums. One is focused on cybersecurity, looking into norms, while uh, another one is focused on gender and digital rights. And in practice, how it works that the IGF secretariat is sort of like a neutral pen holder. So basically we have an editor that works uh, with facilitators from the multi-stakeholder advisory group. Uh, does the outreach, works in consultative way uh, throughout the year with people to understand what are the existing good practices, where are the concerns, what could be the way forward. And then all those um, exchanges happening, as I said, throughout the year, usually 
through uh, regular monthly or bi-monthly online meetings, sometimes even in person when uh, circumstances allow, uh, through surveys, questionnaires, uh, gathering contributions of different kinds, which we all can analytically look at and, uh, um, and gather all the inputs, which go into the output document. So the output document is produced uh, closer to the annual IGF meeting. And then at the annual IGF forum, we are having a dedicated session focused on the work of that particular best practice forums and the output document to understand how the broader community feels about it, whether anything needs to be changed, added, updated to the output document before it's marked as final and formatted so at the end of the year. Um, the same is happening uh, with the um, a different form of, of uh, intersectional work, which we call the policy networks. Uh, the only difference between best practice forums and policy networks is that the best practice forums scope, as I said, relates to looking at good practices, first of all, while the policy networks look at much broader ed issues. So what the issue is, what's the status quo, what are the good practices, but also not so good practices. And then based on all that, what could be the ways forward to bring progress on the issue that's uh, marked as of interest for the community. Another big difference uh, is that unlike best practice forums, the policy networks are, of course, uh, the whole work is done in an open manner, but they are driven by the uh, multi-stakeholder working groups of experts. Uh, so this year we have a policy network on environment. It's looking on intersections between the environment and digitalization. That's something that we saw last year, the community really felt as important. And the MAG, uh, well, the, it was decided that the uh, policy network will focus on that topic. Well, another one relates to another very important global uh, issue, which is the matter of meaningful access. So policy network on meaningful access, as well as policy network on environment, are both driven by uh, multi-stakeholder working groups of 25 experts. Um, maybe just to illustrate a little bit for you, uh, that expertise is uh, really interesting in terms of the composition. So people like, for example, Vint Cerf, that I'm sure doesn't need any introduction, are members of, of that group. Uh, the policy networks are going to be represented here at the IGF as, as well as the PPFs. They have their dedicated sessions. They also produce output documents, documents uh, which uh, I think is a good opportunity if you would join those sessions uh, to understand a little bit more about what has been done so far and especially what, what's the plan for the time to come. And then finally, uh, unlike policy networks and BPS, which are tied to an, an IGF cycle, we have the dynamic coalitions as a form of intersectional work that's happening throughout the year. Dynamic coalitions are basically multi-stakeholder um, networks that uh, work on a particular issue. They, uh, they have a, a very good degree of autonomy and independency, but they adhere to the IGF principles and procedures, and the IGF secretariat runs the recognition process of those. So far, we have 22 DCs. Uh, some of the dynamic coalitions are really uh, ex in existence basically since the IGF, so really for over 15 years now. They are focused on different issues, as you can see uh, on the screen, from public access in libraries to digital economy in small island developing states and the internet principles and um, internet governance school and so on. So I think it's a very good opportunity if, for example, you find an issue that's of your interest to join, not just to get to contribute, first of all, with your inputs and, and knowledge, obviously, to that work, but also to benefit from the knowledge and ideas shared by other experts in those groups and to network, because uh, those, are the, those are the networks that are composed of people coming from around the world of, of different disciplines and backgrounds. So it's a long term, very useful way to be connected. And uh, if we move to, okay, I'm going backwards, sorry. And another point that I just wanted to uh, say uh, relates to not the intersectional work, but a concept that's extremely important to the internet governance forum, I would even say to the internet governance ecosystem. It relates to the IGFs that exist at the national, regional, sub-regional or, or levels or that are uh, organized uh, for and by young people. So we call them the NRIs. Uh, basically, what, what, what everything that's been said now about the IGF, about the working modalities, 
the principles. Uh, everything is applied at the local level. Uh, the only difference is that it's not applied by us, but it's applied by multi-stakeholder teams from different countries and regions, which felt inspired to organize the IGF-like processes in, uh, at the level of the country or region. The IGF Secretariat uh, is entrusted by these independent autonomous um, IGF initiatives to uh, run firstly their recognition process to ensure that they, they adhere to the IGF principles and procedures to strengthen upon demand, obviously, the, the local level. Uh, and uh, also to facilitate the overall coordination among the NRIs. I'm sure that I don't know still uh, what are the countries and regions you are coming from, but I'm pretty sure that wherever you are, there is, if there isn't a national IGF, then there is probably a sub-regional or regional IGF. On this map, you can see that there's a really well um, coverage of the NRIs. And I do encourage you to start engaging in internet governance from your homes firstly. So uh, I would be happy if you reach out, for example, to me, to the secretariat, to connect you with the coordinators and the multi-stakeholder organizing teams to, um, to learn more about the processes existing at those levels. Um, let me just uh, maybe move to where we are now, to what's here in Katowice for all of us. Uh, Cheng et I spoke a little bit uh, about how the program of the IGF is developed. Uh, I will just repeat that the program of the IGF is always people-centered and people-focused. So it's developed in a bottom-up manner where the MAG calls for thematic inputs at the beginning of the year to understand what's the priority. Then there's the analytical look at everything that's been received, which is quite a large volume of inputs. And based on that, the so-called thematic orientation of the meeting is being determined. This year has been very specific. The MAG was very much determined to ensure that this year's IGF is as much as possible streamlined and issue focused. And that's why we don't have those, for, for those of you maybe that, that, that uh, have some sort of a recollection of the previous IGFs, we don't have the traditional teams, broad teams, but we really have issue focused IGF, which means that we have two main focus areas and uh, four cross cutting issue areas which hopefully at the end of this meeting will allow us to understand from over 200 sessions, what are the concrete issues that are of concern for several thousands of participants that are uh, part of the 16th IGF, and hopefully will inspire some cooperation and ways forward to resolve those issues. Um, the narratives of the issue areas have been uh, available at the IGF website for some time, and I do encourage you to look at those narratives and the specific policy questions to understand what under each issue area is discussed. But as you can see on the screen, uh, the issue areas, as much as we aim to be focused, they're also very broad in order to ensure that the global community indeed covers everything that's of importance for the global community. So they go relate to from access to uh, human rights, economic rights, social rights, all the way to matters of cooperation, trust, environmental sustainability uh, and uh, emerging regulations. Um, before I speak about the structure of this year's meeting, I just wanted to quickly refer uh, to the fact that this uh, issue focused program and 200 sessions organized by several hundred stakeholders from around the world for thousands of participants uh, is hosted in a hybrid format. Uh, the IGF, from its beginnings, has always been organized in a way that it had its on-site plus online way of participation. But this year, I think the efforts invested are also much higher, especially because uh, we had our lessons learned last year uh, during the pandemic when we were, we were all completely dependent on online means of delivery of the meeting. So for example, one of the um, solutions and to, to strengthen the hybrid format is to ensure, first of all, that we're all, uh, regardless that we're here in this room, we're also uh, in Zoom together with our virtual participants. The venue, so this really beautiful venue that we are in, has its uh, equivalent online. There's a 3D venue. And so if you haven't yet, you can explore it by going to the IGF website and seeing how the 3D venue looks like. It allows you basically to virtually enter every room in this venue that you can enter here uh, in this, in this uh, physical venue. 
Um, as I said, uh, more than a um, thousand speakers are waiting for us in the next four days of this meeting. I think uh, for, for you, what would be most important uh, is to advise that you really uh, maximize your participation benefits from this meeting by first of all, connecting to people that are here. Cooperation uh, is extremely important and it starts by meeting other people and understanding what they do. Um, there are various ways to connect. One of the ways, of course, is just by merely going to the sessions, speaking during the sessions, but also after the sessions. Um, going also, uh, there's the bilateral room system reservation, which still has some available spaces, I believe. So you can go to the website if you, for example, want to meet bilaterally with someone, you will be, um, you will be um, given an opportunity to reserve a space for that. And if you really specifically would like to meet someone and you don't have really means to approach someone, well, be free to reach out to the secretariat as well. We're happy to uh, connect, facilitate the connection where that is possible. Um, the program as well, uh, I think, is, as I said at the beginning, it's quite robust, so it can be overwhelming at the beginning to navigate it. But um, the good thing is to identify your interests. So you will see that at the, uh, in the schedule, each session is marked with a specific color, and those colors belong to the issue areas. So, for example, if your primary interest is in access, then you will see that we have, I believe, blue color there. Or if your interest is in security, then just follow that color line. In addition, the high-level leaders track, which basically started yesterday on D0, and they continue with the opening ceremonies in a couple of minutes from now, is also an interesting structure of the meeting, uh, worth of exploring. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and worth of understanding where the decision makers and decision shapers on, on higher level stand. There's also the youth track, which allows to meet a lot of young people. Parliamentary track, where you can meet legislators and hear from legislators from around the world. And then it would be extremely beneficial for us. Uh, also, if uh, at the end of this meeting, you would tell us what was your experience, especially if you're the first uh, time attendees. There is the open mic where everyone can just uh, take up the microphone and speak up about the experience at the IGF or uh, what would you maybe change or what was uh, good for you in terms of your participation. And finally, the IGF village is on the ground floor. You probably saw that. It also has its equivalent online in this 3D venue. It's a good opportunity to understand what certain organizations do and uh, you're mostly encouraged to approach those and um, explore explore those possible corporations. That would be all from me. Uh, now I think the question, the floor is yours if you would like to ask any questions or share any suggestions with us since we have a couple of more minutes to go into this session. And of course, I also invite our colleagues, participants that are present in Zoom online to raise their hands, request the floor, and uh, they will be given the floor to speak. I don't see any raised hands. Ah, yes. Do you have a microphone? Ah, OK. Um, we can start asking questions as well. It can go both ways. Um, let me respond to some of the questions that, oh, okay. that have come up in the chat, which I've been trying to, to respond to. So there was a question. So for the record, this is Anriet, um, Esther Hoysen speaking. Um, someone asked if the Jamie McPherson, Jamie, tell us where you are, by the way, even if you write that in the, in the, in the chat, it will be interesting for people here to know. So Jamie asked, is the intercessional work program published online or distributed in another way? So what I said to Jamie is that, yes, it is. And, and I sent him the link. So all of you, if you go to the IGF website, you'll find on the main menu bar a link to intercessional work. And if you click on that, you'll be able to look at everything Anya described, the best practice forums, dynamic coalitions, um, policy networks. But the trick is to join the mailing list. 
if you if you click on the intercessional activity that you are interested in, you'll find a link to joining the mailing list. So in the IGF, we actually tend to use mailing lists as our primary way of announcing meetings, asking for contributions to reports. So, so that would be the place um, to start. And then I also said in the chat that the, the incredible thing about these intercessional activities, and Anya emphasized this, is that you can also initiate them. Some of them are filtered through the multi-stakeholder advisory group. Some are coordinated by the secretariat. But dynamic coalitions are completely bottom-up. And if you work in an area um, uh, of practice around the internet and internet policy, and you look at the dynamic coalitions and you don't see your area reflected there, um, and you want to work in a global multi-stakeholder community on that issue, you can start a dynamic coalition. You have to follow a format, you have to follow the guidelines, but it's really open to, to, to uh, the initiative from anywhere around, around the world. And then there was another question from um, someone called Jonathan um, to say, um, oh, okay, so Jamie was from Australia. Great. Uh, I'm from South Africa. So, so I hope you have sunshine, Jamie. I'm missing the sunshine here, even though it's very nice here in Poland. Um, and then there was a question from someone called Jonathan, who works with UNESCO, asking about how the IJF contributes to the Sustainable Development Goals, and if there is a document that describes the IJF's relationship to the Sustainable Development Goals. And my response to that was that what the MAG does is it always tries to keep the SDGs in mind in a fairly open way, I think, not in a very directive way. But if, if any of you, and I hope you do next year, apply to host a session at the IGF, that's very important. The process of applying to organize a session at the IGF is open to anyone anywhere in the world. You have to follow a template um, to, to develop your, your application. You have to follow guidelines, which means you have to be diverse in terms of race and gender and origin and, and political perspective as well. Um, you have to try it, I should say. It's not always possible to be diverse, but perfectly, but you have to try. And then the MAG will review that proposal. And in that proposal template, we ask the proposer of the session to think about the SDGs. So really we, we use the SDGs as something that's always there in the background, but we also want to keep the IGF open and dynamic and not be too directive. Shangita, I'm not sure how you would say that. So the SDGs are important to the IGF, but it also is this platform that's more dynamic and open and interactive. So I think I've covered all the questions from the chat. Um, and Jonathan, by the way, is from Canada. So we have someone from Australia, we have someone from Canada, we have people from South Africa um, in our remote participants, well, virtual participants. I'm just checking if there are any hands up in the Zoom room, and I don't think so. So I think this is the moment when one of the people sitting here in the room with us have to ask a question. And Please. also, we can. We are. We are also interested um, to see if you, you'd want. Instead of asking a question, you just tell us um, why you're here. Yes, why you're here. What yeah. is your main interest? And you can also tell us where you're from. So just introduce yourself, your name, and why you're here. It, it doesn't have to be very long. You can even say one word: security or whatever. Please. Mm. The microphone is over there. So just get up and and go to it, and just remember to introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, my name is uh, Ingrid Volkner. I'm a professor at Melbourne University, also Australia. Um, and I've worked in globalization and digital communication for some time. I've just completed a big study for the WHO on social media in COVID-19 in 24 countries. So my work is really international, looking at new conceptual approaches to interdependence across countries, new civic engagement. And I would love to be involved with the IGF somehow, but I've joined several meetings, but I didn't never got it how I could be involved, but it would be great. That's why I'm here if there's any chance for perhaps to talk afterwards or uh, whatever to how to get involved. That's my main uh, motivation. Okay. 
Thanks very much. And that's, and in fact, the IJF is the perfect place for you. And it also sounds like you might want to look at some of the existing dynamic coalitions. Um, or also, I think if one's working in an area of research, particularly a fairly complex, nuanced one like yours, the IJF is a very good place because you can get a multidisciplinary, multi stakeholder. Uh, level of engagement. I think one of the challenges of the IGF, and I think many newcomers, you feel one feels quite intimidated by it. But the IGF is one of those things that, until you actually contribute to it, you don't quite understand it. You have to make that transition from just being in the audience to becoming more active. Of course, you don't have to do that, but it becomes more understandable to you if you collaborate on organizing a session, for example, or a networking session, or if you have a booth, or, and, and, and you don't have to do it on your own, you can do it collectively. Anyone else? Yes, I was hoping you would, because you were in our access session yesterday. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Asim Adil. Uh, I come from Pakistan, but I'm based in uh, Frankfurt. Uh, I'm an IT consultant. I worked in uh, different parts of the world. Uh, right now, I'm here just to, because I'm very much um, uh, interested in the topic of data vulnerabilities and uh, like how the internet is becoming difficult place for the common uh, people and how they can avoid uh, all those, uh, what they are going to encounter uh, in terms of their privacy, in terms of, uh, uh, I, I was heading the uh, projects of smart cities in the Gulf region. Uh, I understand that how much data involvement, uh, either in Gulf tech or either from the corporate sector, uh, is making um, very much questionable uh, remarks. And I'm interested that if we come up with some ideas and yesterday I, uh, we had some couple of uh, very good discussions where we talked about some digital human rights and uh, how we can protect uh, people and how we can uh, create more awareness for the common good. Uh, so these are the topics I'm interested in and that's why I'm here. I will be really interested if uh, you can guide me on some particular session that those I must attend, I would be happy to do that. Thank you. Thanks. That's good. I mean, Anya, maybe you can think of some sessions that we can suggest. And um, I have here from our virtual participants, two hands, one from Yusuf Ahmad and one from um, Enoch and Kibung Dut. So Enoch, why don't you go first? Let's see if we can hear you. If you enable, unmute your microphone and speak. I'm not sure, can we? No, we can't. Can they not? Can our remote participants? We in web. Uh, hello. Oh, good. Great. Enoch, just remember to introduce yourself and everyone in the room can hear you. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm Enoch Mikungong Dutz from Ghana. Uh, this is my first IGF, and, uh, but I've been quite involved from somewhere July or June of this year, and I can say that I've uh, really enjoyed the lead up to the IGF. Um, as a youth, being involved in a lot of the youth activities and the youth preparatory sessions, one issue that kept coming up, and uh, I get the impression that this year is stronger. Uh, it might have been the same in previous years, but because I wasn't there, I certainly don't know but it's the issue of more action and less talk uh, there has been this man that the edge it preaches and i'm wondering how the secretariat the mag and the igf as uh, an initiative or a program is taking that quest for more action than talk that is my question. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ina. Um, if you will permit me, the previous speaker did indicate uh, is uh, working in area of data vulnerability. I'm part of the Dynamic Coalition for Internet Security, Safety, and Standards. 
DCISSS. Uh, we have two sessions, I think, then tomorrow, and it may be very interesting for him. So I want to invite him to those Good sessions. To Thank you. A friend from Pakistan, um, Enoch just said that there are sessions tomorrow that are being organized by the Dynamic Coalition on Standards and Safety. Sorry, Enoch, if I misremember it. And you should, and they're looking at issues of vulnerability and you might find those interesting. Next, we have Yusuf, um, Yusuf Ahmad. I think if this is the Yusuf from Northern Nigeria, I'm sending you greetings from Poland. Please, let's hear your question. And if it's another Yusuf, that's also good. Hello, uh, good morning, Anred. I am so delighted to be part of this forum. Well, um, my first um, encounter with uh, internet governance has uh, been the just concluded uh, um, appreciate, and it was a very, very uh, mind-blowing session. It, it gave me the opportunity that shaped the way I see things, uh, most especially in terms of digital literacy and production of uh, local content uh, uh, for, for, for my community, you know. And uh, I am I, motivated, uh, I'm delighted that I'm also part of this um, global IGF. And um, I, 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 I would just like to add that um, uh, going forward, uh, is there a way we can introduce um, the young stars, when I mean the young stars, uh, people from uh, the secondary school to participate and even in the university, to participate in global IGF or even NRI across across uh, our domain because uh, if I look at it, this is like the working force. This is the future of the IGF. So the message needs to be localized. The message needs to be that bridge to the grassroots. So I'm looking at a channel whereby uh, the global IGF can also channel all the activities down to the secondary schools and all down to uh, uh, the uh, tertiary institution. So once again, I'm very, very, very delighted to be here. And APC Deva gave me the platform. And uh, now I'm here. I, I don't know what next. I just hope to uh, see a lot of people gain a lot of things and just uh, make sure that the idea is sustained in our domain. Thank you. Thanks, um, Yusuf. And just everyone, I know Yusuf because he participated earlier this year in the African School um, on inter Internet Governance, which I convened, and he was one of our really very dynamic, active um, contributors. And I think, Yusuf, for you, I would really point you to, Anya talked about the policy network on universal access and meaningful connectivity. And I think if you follow their work, because I know that you're concerned in infrastructure um, but concerned with infrastructure, but you're also concerned with content and language. And I think that, um, and culture, and I think the Universal um, Access and Meaningful Connectivity Policy Network is trying to bridge all of those different aspects of meaningful access together. So they have a mailing list, you know, they're still just starting their work. I think they'll continue, but I think you will find value in that. And also, this year, the IJF program, one of the two main themes is universal access. So also look, when you look at the program, look at the color coding, look at the sessions that are that are linked to, to that thematic area. And, and then just your point about the NRIs, I, I can tell you that we have here in the room with us, um, your compatriot, Mary Uduma, um, and, and I think what you're saying about the link between local and national and global, I think that's very much what the IGF, the access that the IGF tries to generate impact around. But um, Anya and Shengatai, seeing as I've been hogging the mic, there was the question from Enoch about the IGF being challenged about just being uh, about talk and not action. What is your response to that? Well, what a difficult question to respond in less than 30 seconds. Um, I think there is um, really a lot of action about the IGF. Uh, 
several of you mentioned the NRIs, those are concrete dynamics, the intersectional work as well. The fact that thousands of us are here in this place is a dynamic because you don't have other opportunity to meet people who are interested in similar issues as you or in different issues, maybe with different perspectives. I think that's the biggest value uh, of the IGF. And certainly, um, especially if you speak about the local levels through the NRIs, I think there's a concrete policy impact as well. As Andrea said, and Andrea and Chagata was mentioning, uh, laws and policies were changed at the national levels thanks to the discussions that emerged from the, from the NRIs. Yes, thank you very much. Um, time's up, but I totally yeah. concur with what um, Anya has said. Um, we, we do do a lot, and there's a lot of capacity building programs as well. Yes, over the, uh, the past two years, there's been the COVID um, effect, but despite that, we have done quite a lot here. And I'm going to respond by not disagreeing, but saying that talking is important. Why do we undervalue talking? If we don't talk to one another, to people from different sectors, different stakeholders who don't necessarily agree, our actions are not going to be effective. And that's the power of the IGF. It's structured, effective, action-oriented talking. Thank you very much. Thank you to online participants. Okay, uh, opening ceremony. Um, it's best to get there early and 